eight o'clock. <laughs> Do you know where your DJ's at? I know where I'm at. I'm here with you. It is a Tuesday night, as always, and we always do the same thing. 8 o'clock, it's Tuesday. Where's the DJ at? I have a bunch of other DJs here with me. And we all want to share our information and fun stuff with you out there watching. Hopefully you're watching and enjoying it as we get closer and closer to the holiday season here for 2023. If you're watching this in the future in 2024 or 2028 or 2060 and from the moon, whatever. Uh, this is actually uh, the end of uh, kind of the end of November after Thanksgiving here in year 2023. And as always, as DJs, we're trying to go through things and get things ready for either weddings or parties or other events. And as the holiday season is coming up close, and we're talking about some music, and uh, Matt, who is invisible right now because he's driving. Um, it's always a great time to see what people are doing and saying and get how they get ready to, uh, do their, um, events for Christmas time and, uh, all the great stuff, corporate events and so forth, so on. So I have to ask you guys this question tonight for the round table. When you are getting ready and preparing for, um, a corporate party or be it a wedding or be it a just a regular all out the uh, holiday party do you talk to your clientele and ask them what they want played you know do they want christmas music do you want a little bit a lot or none to give you guys an example the wedding i had the day after thanksgiving so this past friday uh we asked a couple because people were requesting christmas music and we asked, do you want Christmas music? They're like, no, this is not a Christmas wedding. This is a after Thanksgiving wedding. <laughs> so there's no Christmas music played. And we had people say, oh, come on. The bride and groom will love it. No. Um, we do not want to make them unhappy. And they were actually very happy at the end of the night, which is important. But when you do that, do you work with your clientele on that? And is Mariah Carey on your list yes you know so i'm gonna start with dj brantley who loves mariah carey <laughs> yeah. i use that uh <laughs> i use that tongue-in-cheek humor because we were just talking about beforehand oh god man no <laughs> so when it comes to you know like niche stuff like group participation dances christmas music <laughs> even you know if i do a wedding around saint patrick's day that's one of the questions I'm going to ask up front because I know what I'm getting into. I know what time of year I'm going to this event or wedding. And more often than not, especially up here, most folks are like, play everything. Go ahead and play, you know, some Christmas music. And so, yeah, I might play Mariah Carey and maybe one traditional old, old Christmas song for the old folks. And then I'm done. You're taking me away from the path that the couple that hired me from wants to go down musically. They want a rager. They want to be bumping all night long. So I really try to keep that in mind. And something I noticed, if you phrase it correctly to people, you can deter them from going to bug the couple. And more often than not, when I'm like, it's not, you know, something I'm not allowed to play or not the do not playlist, you'll get people going, hey, I'm going to go ask them, like, oh, hold up. It's their day. They already asked me not to play it. And for your day, for example, would you want that same respect? Yeah, you're right. Let me leave them alone. And then you have those, you know, slightly entitled family members, which I love when this happens. Sorry, they asked me not to play it. Well, I'm, you know, aunt of the bride or blah, 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 blah. They go to the bride or the groom and then the both bride and groom would look at me and just give me the no. I will sit in the booth, say, you got it, and just laugh about it. Because, you know, I already said they're not going to let you. And more often than not, that's what most of the couples I DJ for do. There's been a few times where, like, uh, what is it? Hoodie Allen, No Interruption. If you haven't heard the song, you're not missing anything. Or Shania, Man, I Feel Like Woman, When I'm Not Allowed to Play Country. Uh, finally, like, there's both those weddings. The bride and groom came in. They're like, okay, fine. You get one. And they're like, 
can you quick mix, you know, no, if you've never heard no interruption, yeah, it's pretty lewd. But because they're like, can you quick mix it? Just give us a verse in the course and get out of it? By all means. But Shania, there's not a real easy way to quick mix out of man, I feel like woman, because it's not computerized. It's real people playing to a metronome, basically. So you've got that issue. So, yeah, I've definitely followed their lists by all means and their wishes. There's no reason to veer from it and be detrimental to their day in any way. Oh, yeah. And that's, that's again, everyone here has done weddings and are wedding professionals. And again, some do more than others, but we all, you know, understand weddings very heavily. And that's a big thing is that they're the one paying the bill. They have to be the one that says yes, you're doing those things and working with your, with anyone, it'd be a corporate, be a, uh, a couple, be a whoever you want to make sure you work with that timeline and that, that, those, that music. But the thing is that, uh, uh, Mariah Carey, yes or no, if you have a choice. No. <laughs> if no. you don't know that, D.D. Brentley does not like Mariah Carey's Christmas music. <laughs> I mean, will I willingly play it? Yes, because, for example, being in the college clubs, right around now, if you need that, you, you don't want to, you know, waste a great banger, so to speak, earlier in the night, but you want to get people motivated to jump and sing a little bit. That first chorus, or that first verse into the chorus, people are going off. And it's kind of that motivational song or that what I would call, I would call a group part, a group song where everybody's going to sing it. Just like, like, you know, don't stop believing. So, yeah, I'll drop yeah. it around this time of year just because I know there's nights I'm going to need it. Do I like it? Oh, no. Absolutely can't stand it. But I also just don't like Christmas music in general. So there's that. <laughs> That's a shock. I love Christmas music. I, 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 as soon as it comes on Sirius XM, I'm playing the van when Tracy and I are going to the wedding. She just turns and looks at me and says, no, it's too early. I'm like, <laughs> come on. And I see you guys out there. What's up, Jim and Adrian and Mike? I see all three of you guys out there. Uh, <laughs> uh, thanks for tuning in, guys. And if you're watching this on YouTube, make sure you smash that like button. You know, Give me a thumbs up. Make sure you hit the subscribe if you haven't done so already. And also down below, put some comments down. Say something. Tell us how you're how we're doing. Tell us what you're thinking. Uh Twitch's sister Christmas music. There you go. Oh yeah. Uh, so, so I'm yeah, gonna go over heavy, to uh, Ohio. Yeah. The heavy metal. I'm gonna do the cold album. states first before we get into the warmer states. Cause uh it's a little cool here. It's uh 17 degrees here in Chicago. I'm sure up Wisconsin is a little bit cooler. But my brother Ooh. in Ohio, I'm sure you're dealing with some cool air because uh, you're just east of me. How do you do Christmas? Do you do Christmas? Do you do when you talk to a client? Uh, even if it's like a wedding and it's during Christmas season. Do you talk to them and say, do you want Christmas music? Do you not want Christmas music? How do you handle that? How do you deal with that? Well, I haven't, haven't had um, a wedding in December, so I haven't had to deal with that. But basically... Uh, the when they ask for a party, it's it's almost a given that they want Christmas music. But I don't, as far as the standard Christmas songs, if I play it, it I'll play it during like background music. But for open dancing, there's a whole bunch of like rap, um, holiday songs, pop songs that I think will work great on the dance floor. So as far as Mariah Carey, if I play that, that'll be one of those things where I'm setting up or there's nothing happening. But over here, they pretty much like this Christmas by um, Chris Brown, um, some Temptations or Motown holiday songs. That works well on the dance floor, too. So, yeah, that's how I do I ask them. Yeah, I ask them if they want it. But I, I, I have songs for different parts of the night. So I know what to play for. What what about when you um when you talk to the client and you ask them, um, and again you said you haven't done any weddings really in December, but when you talk to clients in general, if it's a holiday during their wedding, uh, do you try to find out if they're embracing? Like it could be St. Patrick's Day, it could be, you know, Columbus Day, it could be whatever holiday is coming up, you know, if there's a Fourth of July, you know, whatever you want to say, there's something near their their wedding date. Do they want to recognize or do something? Do you ask that question? Do you pose that question to your customers? 
Um, not really, but because if they want it, like the wedding I did um the weekend before um Halloween. Now they brought it up. They were like, "Oh, can you throw in some Halloween songs?" And that, that was great because you know you have Thriller, and then they have a whole bunch of Halloween remixes of songs. So it's not really a Halloween song, but they have the like the spooky kind of introductions. And that goes back to the Christmas songs. There's a whole bunch of remixes of these songs that just put jingle bills in the back so it had that Christmas feel. But I use the Bible app. So that's where they will put if they want Christmas songs, they'll put it in there. So I don't know ahead of time. So I don't got my way to ask this. Yeah, and the, I only have it on there all I don't have their I again I have the Bible app too. So you know I ask a lot of questions and uh you know the thing is I I ask if there's anything special going on. Like uh we just had the wedding we just did this past weekend, uh this past Friday, it was a birthday party of uh the bride's brother. Her younger brother had his birthday was the day they got married, and so we got had happy birthday, traditional you know, in general happy birthday, and we sung a happy birthday, and it was you know one of those things that you know we knew about it coming up. We got ready. We knew when we we're going to do it. We talked to them even day of. Tracy was talking to um, Christian and his wife because they're married now. <laughs> like I say, his wife. Uh, so we talked to Christian. Uh, and his wife and said, Hey, you know, when do you want this? When do you want to do that? And she wanted it at a certain time. And that's what we did. That's that to me is also an important thing, too. Like you said, you have it, determining if it's a good dance song or if it's, a, you know, more background music. That's the important stuff. And, you know, that's yeah. that's what you want to do. So I'm going to support... also say, bringing up the happy birthday, I had that happen to me at that same party. Somebody uh, wanted the happy birthday song. So what I did was do a line dance. To get everybody on the floor, we stopped. I introduced the song. I played the happy birthday song. We sung it. Then I dropped like um a thing in the club or something that had a birthday thing in it and it and it worked. So it it it, it depends on when you play it and you know how you fit it in. I think it will work. Well, of course, uh, you know, there's a lot of great birthday songs out there that are they don't do traditional birthday. And when they want they want traditional happy birthday. Or the disco version of Happy Birthday by Stevie Wonder. No, no, no. We don't need any of those songs. We need the hook in the chorus of Birthday B. One time for the Birthday B. You've got 30 seconds, and that's all you need. We're going to move on now. That's it. That's all you get. Sorry. Uh, uh, unless it's a party I'm doing, which then, okay, you'll get, the, you'll get that plus the verse and another hook, and then we're out. We're done. I Sorry. I, I'm joking. I was looking at my set from the... Uh, what was it last week? It was last Saturday, I think it was. 225 songs in four hours. So basically you had like two words, you're out to the next song. Uh, there's there's a lot of that. And that's only recording the songs I play more than 15 seconds of. So if it's like turned down for what, you're not going to see that register on the, because I'm only playing the, the drum beat and then we're just getting out of it. I'm duping everybody with some drop. So I'm going to go to the, some of the nicer, warmer states right now who are a little bit warmer than us. And I'm going to start with the northern southern state with Jeff there in North Carolina. <laughs> so, Jeff, for holiday season, um, what do you usually do when you work with your clientele? You talk to your clientele and tell them what's going on and ask questions or how do you handle that? Yeah, you, normally if it's a Christmas party, they're going to want some Christmas music. Um, you know, luckily I don't have any Christmas parties this season. Uh, I had to turn one down because I have a wedding uh, next Saturday. So, or no, this Saturday coming up. Um, so, you know, I, I've got a pretty good list of Christmas music that I can play. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, it's up to the client. But normally if they hire you to play a Christmas party, they're expecting some Christmas music. Not the entire night, but um, they expect it to at least start it off or uh, sprinkle some in throughout the evening. So I always have that ready to go. All right. And when you do with your clients for a wedding, do you talk to them about they want to have Christmas music or a happy birthday or do you well, know the one like this that? weekend? Uh, they've not requested any. Uh, so I don't have any planned. I mean, I can pull some up in about five seconds, but um uh, you know, it's a very country wedding uh, with almost 100% country music throughout the evening. So 
Uh, I I'm don't sorry, expect, sir. <laughs> I don't expect a lot of uh, Christmas music to be requested, but you never know. So actually, they're gonna you know, the third uh, for for the third set for the evening. They've requested some uh, you know some decent rap and stuff. So uh, they'll uh, you know it's good dance music. I think you know it's, the opening set is, is very safe. It's party starting type of stuff and throw in some country. Second set is going to be hard country and uh and party country and then third set they're going to mix it up a little bit so but Ooh. all of the songs for the ceremony and everything is all country so it's in a mm. barn what do you expect <laughs> <laughs> okay fourth, let's go to barn this fall what's up with that i mean <laughs> well let, let's all go to the bar and have fun you know that, that's the whole other thing and you know dj brantley because he does a lot with clubs and bars you know he understands that no, i said barn Barn. Oh, barn. I think he said barn. barn. With, a, with an N. Yes. Oh, I heard barn. Not a bar. Sorry. No, no, no bar. wedding in a bar, but that might be kind of cool. Brad, have you ever done one of those? Yeah, those I, are, those I, are I've done a wedding in a bar. Wow. Just wow. <laughs> I digress. It was, yeah, it was in sight to behold. Just, yeah. I done it once too. Um, they, they rented the whole entire bar and restaurant. So the whole bar and restaurant was closed that night on a Saturday. They paid for it. They had their, the the restaurant, the uh, the kitchen did the food, and they brought some stuff in uh, through um, the owner's partner, which owns a catering company. And but they got cake from a baker. They they came and dressed the place up, and it was a reception only, so it wasn't ceremony and reception. It was just reception only. So, but it was it was pretty interesting because again, what's most reception halls? They have a huge bar, anyways. People go up and drink. This is was a sports bar. And there's TVs everywhere, but they they had the TVs off until the dance floor opened, and the only TVs they had on were a few TVs over the bar with sports stuff. So the guys who didn't want to dance, they can go up there and drink and watch stuff. But the thing is that most of the dance floor and most of the area out out front, people were dancing, having fun, and again, it was very unique. And hopefully, you had a good uh, good uh, time at your uh, wedding, and also the DJ Brantley. Uh, oh no, you know, is a DJ. Especially in Wisconsin, because you know our state pastime is drinking and watching sports or fishing. You cannot win if the Brewers or Packers are in the playoffs and you're DJing a wedding in a bar atmosphere. You just can't. There is no if and possibility of doing so. And both times that I've done bar s weddings at that time, Packers playoffs, Brewers playoffs. No, you're just playing background. You can play every banger known to man. And you're gonna lose. Yeah, it, it's brutal. I can relate. So, I can relate. I will say I, that um, I, I will play Mariah Carey, and I enjoy playing it because it's a great music video. <laughs> it it gets people on the floor. It really does. They they love it. Yep. There are actually two music videos to that song. There's an old one, which is like 15, 20 years ago, the original. And after she became the Christmas queen, like five or six years ago, whenever it was. She uh, produced a new video, so I don't really like the new one that much. I like the old original. Yeah, the old the old video is really cool. Dwayne, what about you? Do you play Mariah Carey? Yes or no? Who me? Yeah. Oh, Mariah um, Carey. Yes or no? It depends. I'll play as a background. I wouldn't play it for like open dance. Okay. Jeff, you do open dance with it, or are you uh, is that a call to the floor, or what? What do you consider it? Yeah, pretty. I can. I usually put it in open dance. I mean, or request. But um, yeah, it's usually it, it is a great uh, opening song for open dance. You know, it, you, you start that one up, and everybody knows. Okay, they, this you know the new standard for Christmas now. I mean, that's pretty much what it is. It'll get people up and you know singing. So I'm gonna go to South Carolina now. Hunter, the best yeah. DJ on the beach. Yeah. Also, the man who loves Dunkin' Donuts. So, if you want to make Hunter happy, please send him a gift card for Dunkin' Donuts. He would take those gift cards and make a lot of coffee runs. Uh, so, when you uh, do an event and you have to talk to someone about music, and it's during, you know, again, Christmas time or it could be any holiday, do you work with them on a list of do they want holiday music? Do they not? And then you know, how do you address uh, when people do request holiday music and br you, the bride and groom are like, eh, I'm not a fan for, you know, this or that? Well, I actually do. But sometimes, well, most of the time, 
they just say play whatever because they trust me and they trust my uh, music choices. But I actually did a 70th birthday party and it was actually during the early part of the Christmas season. So I threw in Mariah Carey's All Up for Christmas is You, Rock Around the Christmas Tree, Jingle About Rock, and without them knowing, and they loved it. So Mariah Carey, yes, as well as yeah. you work with Definitely. them. And, yes, for huge. Mariah Carey. We yeah, lost Matt. <laughs> uh, but Mariah Carey, yes. Okay. That's that's uh that is a good one. I'm gonna yeah. Wow, I gotta wait till Matt comes to, back. Come on, I've listened to Christmas music since before Halloween. That's how long it's been since I've been listening to Christmas music, trying to get into the early Christmas spirit. Yeah, since usually usually I, I I listen to a little bit of Christmas music. I, I I said before that I will be driving and be uh it'll be before Thanksgiving and Sears Saxon usually starts up the beginning of November with uh Christmas music oh, yeah. day after you know Halloween you're into kind of Christmas mode and Tracy's like no no it's it's Thanksgiving I'm like well there's not Thanksgiving music and yeah you know, there is no right? Thanksgiving music except for the soundtrack to playing trains and automobiles. <laughs> well again that's a movie soundtrack but it, there's no like Thanksgiving yeah. songs like there are Christmas songs are <laughs> Definitely I guess not. that's maybe something that you got to work on. I, I, uh, DJ Bradley, I guess you got to get your guitar out and you gotta start making Thanksgiving songs. No. <laughs> no. Here. We're, once Thanksgiving in, in, my, or, in, in, in my brain, once Thanksgiving really rolls around, that means I've got, or, you know, I should have my computer basically ready to go for December, January, February, March, and April, which is more club season for me so the and this is one of my favorite times of the year because you know like how we all throughout the course of our wedding season we'll start adding stuff to our crates we may and some of it may be bangers some of it may not be but we think at some point this might be a great song to throw in one of our crates and now i'm at that time of the year where i've been doing that since wedding season really kicked off last you know from in uh april for me and now I'm just going through stuff like, why did I throw that in there? Get rid of it. re all your cue points on this so you can quick mix this song. You've used it enough. You know how it plays, blah, 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 blah. And this is my favorite time of the year for music because now I can go through all those charts again, things I might have missed, and then kind of prep for next season. And I've been actually, I don't know if anybody else does this, but at least for the club aspect of it, I'm looking at my target audience right now or who's generally at the college club gigs and trying to get a good base for where to start prepping my crates at for for next year as every year you know graduating class leaves now what are the bangers from you know 10 years ago when x y or z person was really paying attention to music starting in like sixth or seventh grade what was a hit song around the time they turned 16 for when they got their driver's license and were cruising in mom and dad's car and trying to put pinpoint those bangers from 10 to 12 years ago right now that are relevant again. And this has been like my ongoing project, but because I've got five and a half, almost six months with more club gigs and wedding gigs, I'm definitely really going through everything, mixing through stuff, working on word plays. And it's been a real, it's been a fun couple of weeks now. It really has. But yeah, skip the Christmas music, skip the holiday music. Let's just delve into music in general and put together better sets. That's my whole. Maybe if you're a club DJ, but not for mobile gigs, because, you know, especially this time of year, a lot of people want to hear Christmas music, especially at birthday parties and, you know, you know oh. events like that. I don't deny it, and it's part and parcel why I just don't do any real holiday gigs. It's not it's not my thing. It really isn't. I miss doing Christmas gigs. I haven't I, done a Christmas I haven't done a Christmas gig since 2021. I guess that uh you're probably the uh Scrooge of the uh DJ set here. <laughs> the only anti-Christmas. <laughs> you're like bah humbug. <laughs> uh, go back to work, Bob Cratchit. Uh. <laughs> you know, it's a day week. I mean, okay, what am I? No, it's not a day I can work this year, so I'm not too upset about it. But when it falls on a Friday, a Saturday, come on now. 
How am I going to make any money on that day? Can't take a club gig. Can't get a wedding. Like even this year, Sunday is Christmas Eve. And because we know how, you know, the weekends play out in a small town, everybody needs to get annihilated the night before the holiday. So Sunday night in downtown La Crosse is going to be epic, just like Black Wednesday was here or Blackout Wednesday was here. So thank God it's falling out on Monday. I can, you know, get a few extra gigs out of the season. Same with New Year's Eve, you know, it's, in, you know, we have, it's on Sunday. So I get that extra Sunday night gig. And, you know, know, there you go. You know, shocking news. I'm probably not going to have a New Year's Eve gig this year. Since my brother's in South Dakota, my sister's in South Dakota. We're not going to be all be together. So it should be the thrill. I just don't know what I'm going to do for New Year's Eve. Well, I would you, you bar hobby in the man cave. Yeah, that's what I did last year because I was so sick because of uh, flying from Vegas to home and yeah, being on that plane. I got sick when I was in Vegas, so I had to miss out on DJing for New Year's Eve. So the next question I have for the table, um, which oh, I actually might do, oh, I might do a Twitch stream for New Year's Eve. Well, there you go. So make sure you check me out on Twitch. So I, the next t- question is for the table. Um, since we all get this every so often, is which I love from our my our clients are, I mean, a little worn out. The thank you, thank you cards because back wow. here it looks white. You know these little thank you cards that you get from clients that um, people send you, um, you know after an event, um, and it is very much appreciated. You know some of the, they they take out and. You know, they write a little note inside and, you know, it, it's a personalized note saying, you know, thank you for everything you did and stuff. I love when I get those. Um, and Tracy and I actually collect them. Um, and when we do wedding shows, we actually display a few. Uh, usually have a little, uh, a lot of times we'll have um, an area where we can display that and have people read them. So that way they can see that, you know, again, addition to reviews online, stuff like that. But having a, a, a thank you card is a personal touch. When you guys get a per, when you guys get a thank you card uh, from your clients um, and a thank you message like that, uh, what do you what do you usually do with those cards? Do you keep the card? Do you have the card? Do you copy it? Uh, do you keep it for a year? Uh, what do you usually do with those thank you cards? So I'm going to start with Jeff. When you receive a thank you card from a client. Uh, do you keep it? Do you save it for a while? Do you keep it for a long time, short time, or? I'll keep it for a little while. Uh, I'll keep the cash if there's any in it. Um, but, uh, I don't, uh, <laughs> I don't save them. I mean, I, I keep them for a little while, but no, I, it's, it's a, it's a business thing. So, yeah, I, I usually, uh, keep it and, uh, in the basement where all my gear is and, uh, eventually I'll, I will toss it out, but, uh, no, it's a nice uh, gesture that you keep them and collect them. That's, that's cool. I appreciate that for you. Yeah. And, you know, again, I look at someone, it, it's kind of like, you know, holiday cards from someone and you, you look back at those cards for the weddings and again, someone took time to write a, a nice little thank you and a, they're appreciative of what we've done. And it's just one of the things like, okay, I want to keep it and, and, you know, uh, we can look back upon it. So Dwayne, when you get a thank you letter, a thank you card from a client, what do you do with yours? Well, I still got mine. So I only got one um, from this last wedding. So what I did was like scan it because at the end of the year, when I do my um, yearly, you know, review of all the gigs I did, but that I did, I was going to just show that up on the screen at, uh, at the last thing. But they put money in there and they gave me a five star review, so that was cool. So, right now I'm keeping it; it's right there on on my shelf in my bedroom. Yeah, one of the things I know I, uh, another DJ has done is take the cards, put them into a frame, um, and put them up in their office. Um, you know, put it up around the room with uh, some of the cards and. That to me is always a thing I wanted to do, but you know when you you have tons of them, and you know we got a little uh, banker's box with cards. And it's not like it's full of uh, cards, but there's a few in there. Uh, in uh, it's like it's more than one frame's worth of uh, cards. 
So it's like, what do we do? What do you do with them? You know, again, I want to hold them. I, I again, someone wrote the letter or wrote the card. I don't want to just toss them out. I, I think that would be very rude. Um, so Hunter, what do you do when you get a thank you card or a thank you letter from your clients? Well, I never, ever, ever get cards from clients, but I have gotten cards from being a volunteer at my church and I do keep them forever and ever because they mean so much to me. It's like a, because I barely get any thank you cards. <clears throat> so it's mostly from church. So I do keep them. And I've actually had some homemade cards from the kids in my classroom at church and I keep those. I hang them in my office. Did they make you Thanksgiving cards when they put their hand on there and make the hand and then they draw out the outline of their hand? And it becomes a turkey. They put a little beak on, little eyes, and maybe a little hat on here. And these are the feathers. And oh, but they have made me birthday cards when I. Oh, turned there you 10. go. Yeah, they made me some birthday cards. I still have them in my office. I do keep my thank you cards. But I've I never just remember. Any, I, I've I, never gotten thank you cards from clients. <laughs> I just remember back in grade school when I want to say second grade, second or third grade, where the teacher had us draw the. Uh, Hand, um, hand turkey. Yeah, the hand turkey. Oh, I remember those. I remember those. <laughs> oh, hold on one second here. Yeah, I even made those cards when I was in elementary school back in the 2000s. <laughs> I made one of those hands and then I slapped Hunter with it. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> so, um, Matt, since you were out driving around and now you're back you're here, um, <laughs> and we're going to go back to uh, the first question we had, which was, uh, I see you got your white dress shirt you're putting away. Um yeah, when you do an event, a wedding or a party or whatever, and it is, you know, holiday time or if it's another holiday, do you talk to your client about holiday music or any other special music that they need for uh, the wedding or the event, like like a birthday or anything like that? Do you talk to them about uh, that? I mean, I if it's a holiday-themed wedding, yes. Uh, I've got, like, three this month. Two, three, that are weddings. Two or three, and um, actually, don't even remember. I think I've got two. I've got one on Friday, one on Saturday. No, I've got one on Saturday, then one next week. Two weddings, three weddings, three weddings left in this month. Um, so I would, um, I ask them like if it's close. To, so my thing is December first is nowhere near close to Christmas time, so I wouldn't even think about it. Uh, if we're getting married on the 15th, 16th, or 22nd, then maybe. Uh, but yeah, I'd ask them first, obviously. Uh, I don't play Christmas music by default, being that I'm Jewish. So uh, that makes it easier on everybody. <laughs> but if they want it, I've got, like I said, I got the best Mariah Carey All I Want for Christmas remix out there. That's the only one I would drop freely. Um, and then I would obviously ask them if they're okay with Christmas music first. Uh, like, you know, hey, if I drop a Mariah Carey song, would you be mad? But usually I've I've done it most of the time in December when I have weddings. And like I said, the version I have is not the corny one. It's like a festival style version. So even if you hate Mariah Carey, you'll love this remix. So I then guess I you guys said a DJ Bruntley because he hates Mariah Carey. Yeah. Uh, it's all, <laughs> so, it's, yeah. I guess you guys said him. And obviously the question, the other question would do you play Mariah Carey? And the answer is yes on that one. Could you have a special yeah, edition of the song? She's um, the queen of Christmas. Just as just as Michael Buble is the king of Christmas. Uh, Mike, Mike's got a lot of great songs. He's a he's a really very talented uh Canadian. Uh mm -hmm. he's got he's got a great voice and he's got some really great tunes, especially, you know, it, it it's it's the uh, old school feel, the the uh, Frank Sinatra, Dean Martin kind of feel with the modern take on it, which is great. Um, and then the, the next question is for you. Um, yeah. I have a card from a customer I just received uh, actually like, you know, last week was a thank you card from a customer. 
Uh, I keep my thank you cards. I have a bunch of them. Um, but the question is, what do you do with your thank you cards? Throw them out. <laughs> That's me. Uh, I to me to me it's like if you write it before the wedding, like if the coordinator hands it to me before the wedding and the tip's already in there, I don't like that. Like you're just assuming I'm doing a great job at your wedding. Like no, I want one like two weeks after. Like that shows more effort. Otherwise, it's like, hey, we pre-wrote all these thank you cards, assuming all of our vendors are going to be amazing. And here's a tip because, you know, we're tipping everybody thinking they're going to be amazing. To me, yeah, I love a tip. I love a thank you card. But I'd rather get that at the end of the night or I'd rather get that a week or two later. Or like to me, what means more is a text or a review the day after saying, oh, my God, like I'm in tears. The wedding was so much fun. Well, I, already got the, I already got the review already. But this was this wedding was back in August, beginning of August. This wedding, and we just received the the, the card uh, again last week. Um, then yeah, I would keep which, those. To me, it's it's a, it's a touching thing, and that's why I keep the cards because they took time out to write out this thank you letter and say, "Hey, uh, thank you so much for doing this. Thank you for doing our you know our wedding, and we appreciate it." And that that to me is everything because it's that personal touch that you know it shows that we have. Uh, we did a great job, but also a, a personal connection with that couple, and they, they, you know, they they called out, which I love. Um, let's see here. Answer some stuff here in the chat. Uh, Mikey Mike is preparing Italian Christmas dinner music provided by the client. Um, Michael, I got said, a good, wow. I got a good recommendation. Dominic okay. the donkey, definitely play Dominic the donkey, the Italian Christmas donkey. <laughs> Okay, yeah, yeah, I know which one you're talking about. Um, <laughs> I think that's more comical than anything, but you know, a little humor in there. Why not? Um, he said, uh, "Wow, another NS." Also, we have uh, DJ Greg Wiggs. Thank you very much for coming in tonight. Hello from Raleigh, North Carolina, which uh, Jeff did say hello, Raleigh. And then uh, DJ Adrian E. He said, uh, "I keep it and." Reminisce about the event and share the letter on social media. That's another great thing to do is scan that letter. And, you know, Dwayne said he's going to scan the letter he got and put it up in his uh, YouTube channel and his social media, which I think that is a great thing to do because it shows your other clients that, you know, this client took time out to write a letter to you, thanking you for your services. And that to me is, is always a great, great thing. Um, and, you know, one of the things is that with the holidays coming up and stuff like that, uh, we always want to share time and friends with friends and family. And the question is for you guys, um, this will be the last question at night, um, unless you guys talk really yes or no on it. <laughs> but uh, with the holidays coming up, with friends and family coming on, uh, how do you make time for your friends and family? And how do you make time for yourself? Me? Anyone? Anyone? <laughs> uh, let's do um, let's do Hunter first. How do you make time for friends and family? Well, I just do. I I just make random time. So I don't really have a plan on how I do it. I just do it. <laughs> I schedule it in my calendar. Business it's comes first. Calendar, okay. Business That's... always comes first, and then uh, I work. I work them in around that. Um, so that's how I do it. I, All right. I, are I you and your uh, girlfriend doing anything for Hanukkah or something like that for uh, some special thing, or going by friends' houses for? Uh... No, because we're we're moving in together next starting Friday. So uh, all of our thousands of dollars that we would have spent on Hanukkah presents are going towards furniture. Oh, there <laughs> Already you go. Have Oh, DJ Fire, what's up? Oh, DJ Fire's in here house now. Yeah. We'll, we'll ask him uh, some questions in a bit here. Yeah. So, uh, oh, no, we're not. Dwayne, we're not, uh, I, Dwayne, you, changing gifts this year. Dwayne, you had the uh, candle burn at both ends with the uh, uh, working as a teacher as well as DJing. How do you <laughs> handle some time for friends and family? How do you uh, try to organize that? Well, I have a lot of time <laughs> um, because normally all my extras, of um, course, correlate with the school. So we get two weeks off. So that's like two weeks I don't have to do anything. So that frees up time there. But our family usually get together at somebody's house. So we have our big, you know, family get together. So that's, 
uh, we take care of that. And then our church usually have a big thing. So that's how I can get around to it. So. So that's, that's actually good. And then Jeff in beautiful North Carolina, I know you have some, you have your kids and you have your family and stuff like that, but you know, extended family, you were lucky to have Thanksgiving by a family member who owns a venue, had a beautiful uh, dinner. How do you spend time and, you know, make time for family for the holidays? You know, how do you uh, balance between a regular full-time job and then DJ your business and the family? How do you balance all three? I just make it happen. I mean, you know, I don't have to schedule it, but um, uh, I, I've, I'm usually not that busy around the Christmas season, around the holiday season. Um, you know, if I get a couple of gigs between Thanksgiving and Christmas, it's, you know, it's about the norm. And, um, and, you know, it's, so it's not that big of a deal. Um, if I got more, I would probably start turning them down. If I had to, uh, if it was right around Christmas, I would probably turn those down just to spend time with, uh, with family. But, um, yeah, no, you just, for me, it just comes naturally. So, yeah, don't have to plan it. Just it's there. Definitely, because I'm gonna be in South. I'm gonna be in South Dakota. We have plenty of time to hang out with my friends, and, like with my family in South Dakota. No way! I'm gonna be in South Dakota too. No, you're not. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're not. It's it's too cold for Matt. Matt would freeze. He would just turn to a human popsicle. Be standing there, like, ah, be frozen. <laughs> yeah, that'd be it. Be, it was man. it was uh, it was in the 60s here the other day, and I was cold. Matt, you are multitasking. You're doing laundry, uh, podcasts, and uh, what else going on? Are you DJing on the side over there that we can't no, see? No, no, just, just, uh, well, see, the thing is, is like all of my shirts, I have this weird build where I'm like 5'10, but I'm skinny. So, like, I like my stuff cut a little longer. So, if I put it in the dryer, it's going to shrink to like waist height. And that's just, yeah. That's yeah, when you get, I, that's I, when you I get tall stuff. Shirts. Yeah, I air dry everything. You get you get tall stuff. That's that helps that out. Um, so DJ Bradley, what about you? What do you? How do you? Could you have your daughter with you? And you know your mom is down this way, but you're up there in the land of cheese. How do you? Uh, how do you spend time, especially your busy schedule, which I always see it's just cram packed with stuff. Uh, so since with my schedule, being a DJ actually lets me get more free time with my daughter. So, because I'm, I'm not working that nine to five thing, so technically the only real time I'm missing out of her life is when she's at school. If I'm doing a wedding on a Friday, and you know her going to sleep on Friday night and Saturdays. Aside from that, when I'm taking off my gigs on Wednesdays and Thursdays, she's going to bed. And as of late, her mom's just coming over to watch her until I get home, which is awesome. It makes my life easier for a lot of different reasons. But yeah, I mean. When it comes to my mom, she's not really into the Christmas thing either. So it makes life super easy. She gets the call Christmas morning. Mary, Mary, cool. How you doing? Not so good. Okay, cool. I will see you, you know, or talk to you soon. Um, with my daughter, like this year, you know, because her mom and I don't live together, um, Christmas Eve is her mom's. I get Christmas Day. And so same with like on Thanksgiving. And now, and plus with that, her mom has a job that with a very strict schedule, but it has odd work shifts. So some holidays she works, some she doesn't. So like last year I had my daughter Christmas Eve and Christmas. So the day after I'm like, get out of here, kid, go hang out with your mom. But I have the ability to make sure my schedule fits the needs of my daughter or my ex's work schedule so I can make my gigs work. Okay, cool. So the man who came in last to the party <laughs> also has so much going I've on. Been, I've been here since the show started. I've just been watching online. Wait, but before before you ask him a question, uh, Nathan, do you still have that uh, that Lico spot that Shed sent you? The big spotlight thing? I do not. Ah, because I have a buddy that wants one of those, and they're of course sold out right now. Um. Because he uses he uses he actual gave, ones. Oh, I gave it. Hit up DJ Mike James. That's who I gave it to. Yeah. Oh, yeah. got bug Mike. Oh, so buddy. the man who has like fifteen channels on YouTube and is uh, has more followers in all the channels than uh, PewDiePie. Uh, 
<laughs> Speaking of, as soon as this as soon as this podcast is over, DJ Fire has a video going out. I'm actually almost done with the thumbnail right now. There you go. Something big. It's something big. I got some big production coming on this weekend, and you guys don't want to miss it. It's huge. I love when you do your tool reviews and you tell like you tell us how it sucks when it actually sucks. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, actually, I've had people say, this is why I subscribe to your channel, because you don't lie to us. You don't try to make the companies happy by telling them their things are great. Um, like, if I pull something out of a box and you 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 look at my facial expressions, yeah. I'm going like, uh, okay. <laughs> yeah. I just saw... Like, yeah, what Oh, like the doorbell thing I got, doorbell camera I got the other day. You got to use, hold on, where's that? Uh, basically, a like, a, it would be nice if it was like this, and you could just plug it into the wall, but no, you got to use the power block to plug in. I'm like, what? That's stupid. Uh, it re <laughs> yeah, rechargeable power, that's not what you want. You want to be able to run the power on the actual door and bell itself, yeah, like, low voltage. Like, well, I mean, like. The part that's the speaker when you hit the doorbell, you get the chime. You know this part that plugs into the wall. I mean, you got to. It's it's. And then there's. I just gave one to Mike today. I'm gonna hopefully have that video out soon. Um, but the one that I got from a different company and the one that I gave him are identical, although they run off different apps. So don't tell me that people don't get stuff from. Uh, you know the same warehouse and then just put their name on it but uh i will say um beat offers want me to become one of their affiliate deals and i'm just like uh i don't know because i put their i put their website in and i put the link to the that light in the video and i also put an amazon link so if people don't want to go there and they want to support my channel by clicking on the amazon link you click on the amazon link you get two for the you know less price than what it would be through on their website. And they got mad at me because I put that Amazon link on there and I'm like, ah, <laughs> my channel, bud. Like, I know you want, they were like, well, we'll send you an Amazon link. I'm like, no, because you'll get the money off the clicks. I don't think so. Well, speaking of uh, yeah. how you do things, uh, got a couple of questions for you. First thing first on holiday season. And you if you heard the question earlier, but when you have a client for this time of year, or if there's any holiday near a event, do you talk to the client and work with the client for music lists? And do you play, you know, play Christmas music for a wedding during December? And then the final question is Mariah Carey, yes or no? Uh, I, I don't think I've played Mariah Carey at any events. Of course, I haven't had it requested, but I mean, are you talking her Christmas song? The Christmas song I want for Christmas. Mariah Carey yeah. Christmas songs. Um, yeah, I mean, I mean, I would play it. I mean, it's okay. It's a Christmas song. Um, I mean, yeah, I don't have a problem with it. I mean, is, is there some people that have problems with Mariah Carey? Well, uh, DJ Brantley doesn't like Mariah Carey. <laughs> um, well, I mean, I don't, I'm not like constantly like, oh, I got to go to my truck. And the first thing I pull up on Spotify to listen to is Mariah Carey. No, it's de definitely not where I go. I normally go to the country playlist or something. But um, I mean, I don't have a problem with her, but I don't, I don't necessarily like she's not like one of my number one people that I listen to. What about what about playlists? Do you work with your clients to figure out that Christmas music works for their event or? Especially during Christmas season, Christmas, or do you just, don't ask? If it's a Christmas event, like, I'm going to be like, yeah, um, I mean, if you want me to play Christmas music, that's fine. If you want regular music, if you want a little bit of both, that's cool, too. I don't have a problem with that. Well, like, I had a wedding mm -hmm. this past Friday, day after Thanksgiving, and uh, people were requesting Christmas music, We and we asked the client, do you want Christmas music? And they're like, no, no Christmas music. So... That's one of the things. Yeah. That's why I'm asking. Do you do you talk to your client? Do you try and work it out with your client when you get stuff like that, or do you just say, "Hey, you know what? It's 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 it. You know, it's technically start at Christmas time. Um, yeah, no, you don't get it. Right. Um, yeah, I mean, I I've, I've I've only done one or two Christmas events. Um, so 
I mean, I play Christmas music. I like playing some of the like uh, Hannah Montana's got rocking around the Christmas tree. That that's kind of good, especially for kids. Um, I do see the one I did last year. I played "We Wish You a Merry Christmas" right at the end, right as I was closing. I thought that was kind of you know perfect timing. Like when you play at bar, when I play at a bar, when it's time to shut the bar down, I play closing time. I mean, get out, <laughs> play the song, you know. But yeah, I mean, I if people don't want Christmas music, then I'm not going to play it. But if they do want Christmas music, then I will play it. So okay. I mean, it just all depends what they want, I guess. You know, speaking of um, with when I did that 70th birthday party, they didn't want any dancing. Uh, so I end up playing high energy, like 50s, 60s, 70s, and 80s music, and they end up dancing. And we started having a good time. So I kind of right. And I kind of relate to that. Well, you know, sometimes you see people who, um, you know, people want to have certain things at their event and you're like, great, no problem. And then sometimes people, they, they don't get out of their own way for the event. And it's like, you want the event to be successful and you know, if you do exactly what they say, the event mm-hmm. may not be a hundred percent. So it's one of the things, yeah. again, you get to talk to your client, work with your client. Okay, so DJ yeah. Fire, last last question is of the night for you, and last question of the night period uh, for stuff is um, if you get a thank you card, a thank you letter uh, sent to you, do you, what do you do with it? Do you keep it? Do you a frame ve- it? A thank do you, you card? Did yeah. you say a venue card? No, a thank you card. Like I have my oh, hand I here. I said a venue card. That, I was like, no. What's a venue card? Thank, oh, thank you, you very okay. much. See <laughs> the camera. Thank you very much. Um, get a thank you card from a client, and they usually write it inside. You know, hey, thanks a lot for the event. And uh, sometimes some people send money. Sometimes people send just a card. And to me, the card is is always welcomed. Um, I'm not gonna say no to money. <laughs> uh, they help right. pay bills. But the big thing is that, you know, again, to me, that when someone takes time to write their letter, write a card and write out, you know, take a pen to paper, especially nowadays, everybody's used to texting and sending uh, emails, um, send this via snail mail uh, to uh, our PO box or to our house. I feel that this is really, really nice. I, I really appreciate these. And we keep them um, because the fact that, you know, again, this is a personal touch from someone, but what do you do with your thank you cards and how do you receive thank you cards? Uh, I've never received a thank you card. No? Nope. I re- Actually, me and Mike did a wedding together in April. It was one of my first gigs that I did with him. And uh, the lady at the end of the night was like, you guys did a fantastic job. Uh, let me get your addresses. I'm going to send you something a little special. I like sweet so we sent him you know the address and everything and never got a single thing so sometimes life gets in the way with clients and stuff like that and you know it's, it's a hard thing it happens more than you think I, i've had people people do not follow up on what they say they're going to do i think about half the time when they say oh well i'll leave you a great five-star review or oh i'll do this or oh i'll do that or oh I'll do... no people people say they do stuff and they don't people's word is not good anymore. <laughs> well, and again, like for, at the end of the night, at the end of an event, you know, they are tired, they're worn out, they forget about mm-hmm. it. They tell you stuff, and they have other things in their mind, other things come up, other things happen. Life gets in the way of things. We all know how that happens. Uh, and that's that's the hard part with, you know, owning a small business is that we don't have deep pockets. We don't have a big, huge uh, group of people doing advertisement for us and trying to make sure we are up there and, you know, and popularity, uh, we, we try to do what we can do as a small business person and, you know, try to do the right thing. And, you know, it, it's a hard part. So, um, wow, it's almost, almost now where you only got a couple minutes left here. Uh, anybody want, else want to say anything, uh, about anything? How's everybody's Thanksgiving? It was good. I went, I actually went camping and I lost my wallet. So I Uh-oh. lost everything. Yeah. Is, I it, lost is, it in the, is it in the tent? 
<laughs> uh, we, didn't, we didn't rent a tent. We rented a, we rent we yeah we rented a single wide trailer. Oh, cool. yeah, they have those to to rent and because um, it's called Pirate Land and they have a lot. They have like cabins and single wide trailers, and, you know, double wide trailers and all that stuff you can camp in. And that's where I, you know, technically lost my wallet. I mean, that could be a guess, but I don't know where I left it. And I lost everything, including the check from my 70th birthday party gig that I DJed. Well, that's that, funny. That money, it's all gone. So I'm flat broke. They <laughs> just have to tell them maybe they can get you a new check or something. Yeah, yeah. that's why I told them. I said, you know, make sure you contact them. Because if someone cashes that check, that means well, they're a thief. Or we're canceling it, so it's not going to be void for anybody who do, who tries to do that for security well, reasons. Again, it, it's it's you want to get that done right away, so you make sure you contact the person with the check. Uh, but the thing is that you know when you guys are doing stuff and you're you're working on things and you're doing, you know, getting ready for the holiday season and stuff like that. One of the things I want you guys to make sure you do. That's why I asked before how you know how do you're scheduling yourself to make sure you have time for family and friends. Uh, I know DJ Fire, he's got his uh, friends and family. He's always busy, but you know, I know he that makes a lot of time yeah. for friends and family. Um, as well as everyone else does here. But one of the things I want you guys to do is also take some time for yourself this holiday season. Take, you know, 15, 20 minutes, an hour, whatever, and just relax, sit back, and think about what you want to do for 2024, where you want to put your business at, and where you want to put your DJ, you know, uh, life at. But also just... Are you I already, I already know where my business is going in 2024. Down the toilet. I'm not going to say that. I haven't had a DJ gig since 2021. But I've had hey, some. I didn't, hey, I didn't have small. that many gigs this year. But hey, I'm not complaining. I had way too many landscaping jobs. So that. Well, I'm, you know, I don't have any other job. I'm on, I'm on the autism spectrum, and it's hard for me to find a job that I can do along with my DJing. It's hard for me to survive in this world. Well, maybe so maybe maybe you start a landscaping business, start cutting people's lawn around that in their neighborhood. It's not really my you know interest, but it is. It's one of the things. Make sure you take care of yourself this holiday season. I know we got a lot of stuff going on with friends and family, a lot of stress from that stuff, and everyone out there too. Make sure you guys are also between gigs. If you have a full time job, part time job, whatever it is, take time for yourself. Make sure that you relax. Enjoy, embrace your loved ones. If you have a wife or girlfriend or a husband, a boyfriend, whatever the other person is in your life, mom, dad, brother, sister, make sure you give them a hug and, you know, tell them, hey, thank you. Be appreciative of them, help them out and try to do something kind this winter season. There's a lot of stuff going on. There's people out there who need help. But again, if you see, you know, the Selfish and Army, the person out there standing ringing a bell, you got an extra dollar that you can afford to give away. Put that, you know, put a dollar in the, in the kettle. I'm not saying you do it every time, but at least do it once. If you can do more than that, great. If you can't do that, volunteer, do something at anywhere. And there's pet shelters, there's a bunch of things you can do. But you need to spend some time with yourself, spend some time giving back. But most importantly, make sure you enjoy this holiday season because it goes by so fast. You know, before it we know really. it, we're, we're going to be talking about, hey, it's it's, it's summer 2024. Yeah. How crazy busy are you? you know? that, that'll be <laughs> yeah, and that, that's the thing is that it goes by so quickly. And as a, as a parent and having a granddaughter, it's one of the things that, you know, I get to enjoy, you know, my granddaughter time with her and stuff like that. But she's grown up so quickly. There's only so many birthdays there are out there. I can see her as a little, you know, little kid and growing up next to next before I know she'll be a teenager, then she'll be an adult, you know, in college. And same thing with DJ Brentley, he has his daughter. She's grown up very quickly. And no you know, Jeff's got kids, you know, in high school and stuff like that. They're growing up quickly. You know, uh Dwayne's got family, Matt's got family, he's moving with his girlfriend, you know, uh DJ Fire's got family. Moving in with the girlfriend? Yep, yeah. he's moving in. But make sure so you guys that. all take time for yourself. At least 15 minutes, an hour, whatever it is. Sit back, relax, and enjoy yourself. Do something that you enjoy. Just make sure that you enjoy this holiday Go season. Go ahead, Nathan. <laughs> enjoy uh, this so holiday season with everyone. Are, 
are you getting are you getting married or just moving in together? No, nah, no. Nah. We gotta we gotta make sure that we could stand each other first. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that is a recipe to success for marriage and making sure that you guys enjoy each other in marriage. I would highly recommend if you're thinking of marrying a girl to live with her for a little bit beforehand. That way you know, oh, exactly. she does not put her toothpaste back where I, the way I do it. This way you know, oh, she doesn't let, I got to roll my socks a different way or whatever the thing is. Because My thing is when you, people use, my thing that, that bugs me is when people use non-normal toothpaste. Like you either use Crest or you use Colgate. You don't use... The, the the triple whatever one you don't use some specialty sensodyne you don't use like anybody I that use uses it. i use sensodyne i, I use sensodyne. Sensodyne. weird people <laughs> i have sensitive teeth i, I use sensodyne uh, God, i have sensitive weird. teeth i don't i'm in pain should i be in pain no but I, well you're, you're that's not. what it's designed for if if you're young and you have to use those, that's where it's like red flag. I'm almost, oh, I'm, I'm old or something. Oh, great. Hold on. <laughs> Let me get my wheelchair out, folks. Hold on. You know. Let me walk her out here, you know. Hey, get my lawn. No, but you gotta see, you gotta see what toothpaste she uses. You gotta see her her bathing habits, which you know, I've we've we've stayed with each other for a couple days at a time here and there, so it's not like a total surprise. Couple of days is not living together. I know it's, it's different. Trust me. But at least she'll she'll it. keep everything clean though. She's she loves cleaning and organizing. That's oh, like there you her. go. That's not a bad thing. All right, guys. So, so the time is up. The time has come to an end. <laughs> Make sure if you're watching this on YouTube, you put down below what you're thinking. Make sure you put comments, critiques, criticisms, Tom Fool, or anything else down below. And thank you all for watching live. You're here watching live on Twitch. You can watch the recap on YouTube. If you're watching this on YouTube, you could have been here live on Twitch answering questions and saying things. And thank you, Adrian E., for saying that I'm um, speaking the truth right there. Uh, and then Greg, DJ Greg, thank you so much. And uh, I also say, you know, see, it's always good to take care of t some time for yourself. Yes. Make sure you take time for yourselves. All right, guys. With that said, we'll see you again next Tuesday night at the DJ and, Roundtable. Hunter, take and us I'll, out. I'll, and I'll see you on December 19th. Peace out. Mm -hmm.